Welcome to Tech Insight, where we show you how to make your workspace work. In this episode, we are going to focus on security analytics. Security analytics allows you to monitor and identify suspicious activities in your network to proactively protect your environment. So let's take a look at how it all works. Let's take a look at some of the information that security analytics can present to my administrators. When I first log in and look into the security analytics tab, I'll be able to see which users are deemed high risk versus medium risk or low risk. And I can get even more information when I click on see more to see what the latest risk indicator is, um, what the change in score is. So let's say that I want to look at someone like Kevin Smith who has had a pretty significant change in their score. I'll go ahead and click on their name and be able to get more information as to exactly what they have been doing that is considered high risk and what actions the system has taken place in order to secure my organization. So I actually want to take a look at what Kevin has been doing, not just for the last hour, but for the last month. So here I can see a timeline of everything that he's been doing that the system has deemed as risky. So whether it be that he has large uploads, that he's logged in from an anonymous IP address or that he's had logon failures, I can easily see what Kevin is doing in order to raise that risk score. If I click on that risk indicator, I can also see exactly where it's coming from. So in this case, it's coming from an external source or the Microsoft Graph Security, but I can also th see things like, for example, the logon failures, which are coming from Citrix Gateway and see exactly when they happened and a description of that specific event. Additionally, you could see that the system has already taken actions in order to secure my organization. So for example, here, session recorded has been started in order to, if Kevin is doing risky, risky things, that I can then go back and take a look at exactly what he was doing in order to maybe put my organization at risk. If we go back into the security tabs, we also have different views. So I could look at the user access summary and the user access summary, essentially what it is, is it shows my top risky users by access. So who has been accessing sites that maybe aren't great, downloading data from dangerous sites that could potentially add risk to my network and my environment. The same information is presented through the app access tab, except now it's being shown instead of by users, by domain. So which domains are my users are, are my users accessing that are deemed risky and which domains are they downloading data that could also uh, potentially increase my risk. If I go into the share links tab here, we could get the information from Citrix files. So which files have been shared and why um, are they maybe deemed risky because they're being downloaded a lot of times anonymously. Um, and I can see here which links would increase that risk score and potentially have data being exfiltrated from my environment. So a lot of great information for your administrator to take a look and get an overall view of your environment and what actions are being taken that may be putting my organization at risk. Essentially how security analytics works is we're able to take information from our different data sources coming both from Citrix workspace as well as the external data sources and through machine learning, we're able to categorize users as high, medium, or low risk users. How the risk scores work is we take all the data and through policy-based violation, user behavior modeling over time, artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, anomaly behavior detection, and through peer group normalization, we're able to determine whether your user falls into high, medium, or low risk score. Based on that, we're also able to take automatic actions in order to protect your environment. So let's take a look real quick at what the architecture looks like. Citrix Analytics is a cloud hosted service and it gets its information from the different data sources. These could be cloud services as well as full on-prem virtual apps and desktops. And we also have third party integrators that Citrix Analytics can collect data from. So now we're going to go through how to configure security analytics. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to log into your Citrix Cloud account and you'll be able to manage your analytics service from here. So we're going to go ahead and click manage. 
The first time you'll log in, you'll get some information about Citrix Analytics. You can even watch a demo. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So what you're no notice up here is that we're going to start discovering data sources. So here it's going to discover the available data sources that we have available so that we can turn on that data processing and start actually collecting data for the for security analytics to process and go through. So it's very simple. The only thing that we have to do is simply go and turn on the data processing for the specific data source that we want to collect data from. So I can simply, for example, on access control, hit turn on data processing. It'll ask me to make sure that I do want to collect data for this specific service. And once I confirm that, it'll start turning that on. And I'll do this for every service that I want to be collecting data from. So if I also want, let's say, for content and collaboration, I would go through the same process to turn it on. We're going to do the same thing for virtual apps and desktops, but this time I'm also going to show you for your on-prem virtual app and desktop environment what you need to do. So I'll go ahead and hit turn on data processing and I'll wait for that to complete. And then once it's complete, you'll see that I have an in a configuration incomplete because there's additional steps that I need to take as an administrator in order to collect data from my on-premise site. In this environment, we have already turned on site aggregation for uh, the workspace. So you need to do that first in order to start collecting that data for Citrix Analytics. I'll go ahead and go into the configuration as incomplete and it'll show me the discovered sites. So I could see this. I could see here that I have some discovered sites with a configuration incomplete. If I don't want to use site aggregation, we now have the ability of also connecting directly to a storefront deployment. For, but for the purpose of this demo, we're going to show how to enable it for already a discovered site that's aggregated into Citrix Workspace. So I'll go ahead and, and hit here, and you'll see that it asks you for some prerequisites. So this actually needs to be completed directly on the delivery controller because it's going to ask me to install a specific agent. So I'm going to switch over to my delivery controller over here. I'll go into the analytics service like I did previously. And then here I could go into settings, data sources in order to complete that configuration. So I'll go into the configuration and complete. I'll see a, an alert saying that my configuration is, is incomplete for this specific site and I can go ahead here and actually install and configure that agent. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna download that agent. So I'll go ahead and open that, run that file. I'll accept to the terms and agreements and hit install. Once this has completed, I'll go ahead and hit finished and I'll say that I wanna connect it to the installed agent. I'll prompt me for my delivery controller credentials, so I'll go ahead and type those. and then I'll hit next. And then it's gonna ask me to type in my director URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once I type in that URL, I can go ahead and hit next. So I'll be able to see my IP address, the controller name, I could see the status of that. And now I, all I have to do is go ahead and hit done. And we'll see that it effectively added that controller site to analytics. So Citrix Analytics will start consuming that data. So what happens if you still haven't adopted Citrix Workspace and are a full on-prem customer utilizing Storefront? We now have the ability to integrate with Storefront deployments. So all you have to do is click on Connect to Storefront, download this file to your Storefront server. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Once the file has been downloaded, you should move it to a safe place. So in this case, right now it's on downloads. I'm gonna move this to my desktop. I'll verify that it's in my desktop in order to, to continue the configuration. The next thing that I have to do is I need to run a PowerShell command. So I'm actually gonna copy it from here so I don't have to type it all out. And then I'll change the configuration path that it asked me for. I'll go ahead and type in that configuration path. So in this case, I had saved it to my downloads, but you would t put in wherever you saved it and then run the command. Once that command has been run, 
I can go back into my Citrix Analytics service, hit Done, and then I can go ahead and refresh the page. It may take a couple of minutes for the storefront deployment to show up, so if it doesn't show up automatically, give it a couple of minutes, and then we'll be able to verify that we have successfully configured that storefront deployment and analytics will start consuming that data. Now that I've set up my data sources, I can go ahead and start creating and setting those policies. So I'll go into settings, indicators and policies, and then click on the policies tab. So here I can go ahead and create different policies based on the services that I have available to me. So for example, I can say something like, if there is a risk score change greater than or equal to, let's say 15, in a matter of one hour, I wanna be able to add that user to the watch list. So I'll go ahead and apply that, enable that policy, and go ahead and hit create. So it's very easy for me to set policies quickly and effectively. We'll go ahead and try another one. So let's say that I want, if I have a user attempting to access a blacklisted URL, I want to be able to notify the administrator that this is happening. And so again, I can go ahead and enable this policy and hit create. And just like that, I quickly created two policies in order for the system to start taking actions within my environment. The other thing that I'm able to do is set custom indicators. So here I can set indicators that would deem a user high risk, medium risk, or low risk. So I can go ahead and create an indicator, say that I want apps and desktops. If a device is jailbroken, I wanna be able to every time have that be a high risk event. And I want this, I'm gonna call this jailbroken device access. And then I can go ahead and create that indicator. So I can go in and actually create custom indicators in order to depict my users as high risk, medium risk, or low risk users.